Hi, my name is uh, Horatio Vultur. I'm a software engineer at Microchip, and today I will present the media redundancy protocol. Uh, first, I want to say a disclaimer. Uh, here, we will present what we understand from the standard, and we try to do it in the best way, but we might be wrong in some parts. So the best is to read the standard and look there for the information. Uh, so first, what is MRP? MRP is Media Redundancy Protocol. It's a recovery protocol based on ring topology with fast recovery times of a single failure in the ring. Uh, MRP is standardized by the International Electronic Commission um, and it's primarily used in the industrial ne networks because it's cheaper to have a ring topology than to have a switch in a central location and aggregate all these other uh, switches. Um, unfortunately, this uh, protocol cannot be implemented 100% in the user space and we need to do some changes in the kernel to have this because the kernel needs to understand these MRP frames and needs to process them. Uh, it's not that easy to implement this because it has quite a few state machines, the protocol and timers and the standard is not precise. There are some mistakes in the standard. So we had to interpret them the best as we can. Uh, the current status of the MRP is we have MRM, MRC, MRA accepted, and we continue to add uh, other features in. So it's kind of like 50, 60% already upstream. And what we want is for the community to continue to help us and guide us to add the rest of the features. Uh, so uh, in a ring, we have, if we look in the top pic picture, we have uh, one MRM, which stands for a, a manager, and in a ring can be only one manager, and there can be multiple clients, which is MRC. Also in a ring can be uh, auto manager, and this means, uh, this behaves as a manager or as a client. It's a voting uh, algorithm that uh, goes between all these auto managers. We'll talk about that a little bit later. In the lower picture, we see two rings where there are two MRM and one interconnect ring that uh, is formed out of these four uh, nodes. And they have also roles and they are interconnect roles like interconnect manager and intercon interconnect client. In a interconnect ring, there are always four nodes, uh, one manager, interconnect manager, and three interconnect clients. There are two modes for this uh, interconnect ring to operate. One is a uh, uh, link check mode, uh, where it's sending CCM frames, and the other one is a uh, ring check, where it's sending these uh, interconnect test frames. Again, we will cover all this later on. Uh, now, uh, to present uh, the PDUs used by MRP, they have their own uh, PDUs. First, the destination MAC, it's a multicast address where the last uh, byte depends on the MRP PDU type. Um, the source MAC, it's um, uh, the MAC of the uh, port. It has its own Ethernet type. And then the MRP PDU is PLV based, but uh, it has a version that uh, it's two bytes and it has version number one. And then it's a TLV base where you can have the following uh, TLVs like test, topology, link down, link up. And then it's followed by a common TLV and an optional TLV and it will finish with a uh, and TLV. Um, it's important uh, to remember that these uh, frames, they have a priority. When I meant by a priority, I mean by the field in, in, the, in the frame and not the uh, priority of the frame. Um, 
yes, now that we know the frames that are used by MRP and the roles, we can talk a little bit uh, who is doing what. And for example, uh, MRM is generating the test frames and is sending on the uh, ring port and is terminating those frames. It's also generating topology frames and terminates those. It, it traps the uh, link down, link up frames and uh, also it terminates those. And optional frames, we'll talk about those later on, but it will terminate also those frames. And then with MRC, it's just forwarding those frames and MRA is listening and for the other frames. Uh, if we look also at the colors, this is what we propose uh, in the kernel, that uh, MRM to generate these frames in the hardware, because there are profiles where it needs to generate up to 4K frames per second and needs to process those frames. So it will be much better if the hardware can do that um, and then the CPU can do something else and it's uh, taking all the work from the uh, CPU. Uh, what is with the uh, green? We think we can be also offload to the hardware, uh, but it cannot behave as a, a manager in this case, because it needs a special, it needs to generate these frames. And what is with the yellow color? We don't see any uh, performance benefits by uh, uh, offloading this to the hardware because only a few of these uh, frames are sent out. So there's no, re uh, no need for that. Um, here is just a, a, an ex a simple example where we have one manager and two clients. And if we look at the colors of the lines, we, uh, the black one represents the internet, the wire connection, and the two color uh, green and red represents the, the test flow frames. So when the manager starts up, it starts to send continuously test frames on both of the rings. Um, eventually, the, these uh, frames will reach back to the manager because the client is just forwarding these frames. And when the manager sees that, that it receives its own frame, then it will set one of the ports in a, a blocking state and the other one will set in the forwarding state, meaning that uh, no frames are go going down on the block state. Um, and it will send also uh, topology change frames. So then every client, it needs to process these frames and they will clear their uh, FTB, the forwarding database. So then everyone in the network will have a, a clear for uh, FTB. But let's say then, for example, one of, the one of the links between the clients goes down. In this case, then the test frames are not coming back to the manager and it, it will detect this and then it will set the port, the block port in forwarding state and it will send again topology change frames on both of the rings to notify again the clients that uh, the topology is changed, so they need to clear again their forwarding database. Um, let's talk now about uh, auto manager because the case with a manager, in, in case the manager uh, dies or is removed, then you need to configure a client for to behave as a manager. Uh, but this auto manager, they can automatically detect when to behave as a a manager or a client. So you can have a ring only with auto managers and then everything will work even that you remove uh, uh, a switch from the ring. But before talking about the auto managers, we need to present the frame types used by this. Uh, it's similar with a ring, but it has a sub TLV where there are two, well, there are multiple uh, sub TLV, but the most important ones are the uh, manager, manager NAC and propagate. Um, if we take again an example, here we have uh, two clients and two who auto managers. And again, when they start, they behave as a manager 
and they start to send uh, ring test uh, frames on both of the ring, both on both of uh, ports. Uh, eventually, these frames will reach the other manager, and here is the voting algor uh, algorithm where if uh, a manager sees the test frames from a, a different manager, it will uh, look at the priority of these uh, frames. By priority, I mean the priority field in the ring test frame, and it will compare with its own priority. If it's a smaller priority, it will send this optional frame manager neck to tell the other manager to stop sending uh, frames and behave as a, a client. And in that case, when the other um, uh, auto manager receives this uh, frame, it will, like I said, it will stop sending frames and allow all the test frames to, to get uh, through. And in this case, again, the, the test frames will come back to the manager and it will set the port in a blocking state and it's similar as before. But in case that the, the manager is removed from the network or, or the MRP instance is deleted, then there are no more frames, no, no more test frames in the network. So then the, the man, auto manager that behaves as a client, it will detect this and it will start to send test frames by itself. And in this case, this uh, will come back to the uh, um, auto manager because there is no other auto manager in the in the ring, and it will detect uh, any links down and it will do all these recovery times. Um, the last uh, main feature it's uh, you can you can connect multiple rings because usually in a ring the standard suggests that you should have up to 50 nodes but if you have i don't know let's say what, hundreds of uh, nodes you can make smaller rings and then you can just connect these rings and uh, this uh, interconnect rings is just connecting multiple rings um, again if we are uh, looking at the frames used by interconnect rings, they are similar with the ring, with the TDUs used in the ring, only they have uh, different uh, TLVs uh, types. And yeah, it's pretty similar. Uh, if we talk about, again, about who is doing what, it's similar with the rings, only that in this case, also the ring manager and the ring client will see these frames. And the uh, ring manager, it will terminate these frames or forward. It depends on some states in the state machines. And uh, the uh, ring client, it will just forward these uh, frames. And uh, again, we propose some uh, parts to be done by the hardware like uh, generating and terminating the interconnect test frames and uh, terminating the, again, the test frames, interconnect test frames by the ring manager. Uh, everything else can be, again, uh, pushed in the hardware to do all this forwarding and termination of the frames. Uh, it doesn't need any special hardware for this and the, gener uh, the frames are generated in the software because again, there are not many frames and it's fine to do that. There are two ways, as I mentioned before, to operate for these interconnect links, in interconnect rings. First mode is link check, where um, each of the uh, MIC, uh, interconnect clients and interconnect uh, manager, it, it will start to send CCM uh, frames on the interconnect port. And when the manage, interconnect manager sees that it has a link, it will send the frame uh, interconnect status poll to the client to see the status of the interconnect link. And in case that one is up, it will set its own port in a blocking state. 
and then it will just continue to send these uh, CCM frames. But if the the link between the cl interconnect clients is going down, the clients will send interconnect link change frames, and uh, eventually these ones will reach the interconnect manager. For example, if we follow the 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 or orange, dark orange uh, line, we can see how they are uh, sent in the in the rings, and we can see also that the manager is uh, stopping this, is not forwarding these uh, frames because otherwise there will be uh, a ring. And then when uh, the interconnect manager receives this frame, it will set the port in the forwarding state. It will send interconnect topology change frames on all the uh, ports, and eventually these ones will reach the uh, ring manager, and the uh, ring manager will process these frames, and it will need to send topology change range frames. So then everyone in, in the in both rings will clear their uh, forwarding database at the same time. Uh, the other mode is a uh, ring check, and it's uh, similar with uh, a ring, where the interconnect manager is sending these uh, interconnect test frames on all ports. Uh, and again, if you look at the at the lines, you see how they are forward and where they are terminated. And if you follow, for example, again the orange line, uh, then the frames send on that line, uh, it will come back to the the manager, interconnect manager, and it will see that, okay, the, the interconnect ring is closed. So we'll set again the, the interconnect port in block state. Then again, if the link is going down between the interconnect clients, it will stop receiving the interconnect test frames. It will send the interconnect topology change frames. They will reach the MRM, and MRM will send the topology change frames. Um, one um, advantage of the LC mode over the RC mode is there are fewer uh, frames in the in the rings because, as you see in the uh, previous slides, all these interconnect test frames are going also in the rings. And in those rings, also the MRP test frames are, are, are flowing. So it's uh, fewer frames for the LC mode and it's less processing. Uh, and the last uh, feature of the uh, standard is that you can have at the same time multiple MRP instances of on a, a switch. For example, if a switch has four four ports, you can have two instances because each instance needs two ports. And because of this feature, we could not use the MDB from the from the bridge to do all these forwarding. So we had to implement our own forwarding scheme. Uh, yep. And if we talk a little bit about uh, implementation, um, when we have sent the first uh, patch, we got really good comments saying that we try well. We try to put everything in the kernel initially, the MRP state machine and all the timers and uh, generating all those frames. But we were supposed we were told not to do that. And then we try to move in the user space as much as possible. And we have all these uh, state machines and uh, uh, we generate all these. Uh, topology and link change frames in the user space and all these timers. There is a, a link uh, to this uh, user space. And then in the kernel, we, we try to do only what is essential and time sensitive. For example, generating the, the test frames and interconnect test frames and detect when we stop receiving these frames and forward all these uh, frames on the correct uh, ports. Uh, the implementation can be found in, in that file, br underscore mrp, and there are a few other 
MRP files there for net link processing and for switch dev support. Sorry. Um, yes, and if we look from a, a, a switch perspective, we see three cases. A switch that doesn't have any uh, offload, it cannot be it cannot offload anything to the hardware, so it's a pure software. Then uh, everything is done in the software, the gener uh, generating the frames, detec detecting when these frames are stopped receiving, and all the forwarding is done in the software. Then uh, it's uh, bridge, uh, so, uh, switches that have, a, for example, a switch dev driver, and um, but they are not uh, MRP aware, meaning that. Um, they cannot generate these uh, test frames. Uh, but these um, switches, they can behave as MRC if they can trap the frames, the MRP frames. And the last uh, is uh, switches that, that can generate the, the, test, uh, the test frames and detect this. And currently, I don't think there are any switches, but, uh, but we are working on on adding those. Um, as I said, uh, it, the, the, the standard says that it has uh, fast recovery times and there are different profiles for uh, this, how fast you want to recover. For example, it can recover up to 500 milliseconds, but for that it needs to send uh, test frames every 50 milliseconds. And, but it can also recover up to 10 milliseconds. And in that case, it needs to send uh, test frames, for example, every 500 microseconds. So we really think this, uh, this should be offload to the hardware. And, ah, sorry. Uh, uh, this um, profile, it's for the interconnect ring. It's uh, not requiring so much uh, work from the software point of view, but still it would be nice to generate the test frames in the in the hardware. Uh, the future work we are trying to upstream now the MIM and MIC support. We are trying actually we are trying to do the ring check mode, and we have sent some patches and we got some good comments. We are. Uh, working on this to fix all these uh, issues that other people found. And if you have any questions, that's it. Thank you. That was a good talk, Martin. Uh, so uh, there's a couple of questions, but I'm actually going to ask one of my own and sort of lead the discussion mm -hmm. that way first, which is um, so, I mean, a lot of the characteristics of what you're talking about is what STP and BPDUs do, right? So, so, and maybe you explained it and I didn't quite understand it. Why invent a new technology? Clearly the, the one difference is that if you had two parallel links, STP would hold one of them down, which you are avoiding. But is that the only reason to go invent a brand new protocol? It's also because it's detecting the the failure of the uh, or the of the rings or the uh, yeah of, of the links in much faster time. For example, as you've seen in these uh, profiles, it can detect uh, a failure in ten milliseconds, and uh, in STP it's higher. I don't know exactly. No, no, but that's uh, that's not fundamental to the STP design, right? Like, I mean, that so the two questions, right? STP has been like has taken years, and there, if there are enough people here from Cisco, etc., they can tell you of of uh, decades of experience to get it to a stable, reliable spot, and it's still a pretty fragile environment. And layer two technologies tend to be. Uh, so the question is twofold. One is, was there something fundamental in STP that required a new protocol to be invented? And the second is, even if there was. Was there an attempt made to at least use things like BPDU formats in a meaningful way? Because a lot of the signals that you have, priority, identification by MAC, any layer two protocol needs it. 
So creating yet another one and thus adding code to the kernel and adding another L2 implementation seems could be better. And maybe it's too, you know, it's a standard already, who knows? So, uh, well, I'm, I'm not working with the standard. So there was already, well, I just implemented the, the, the standard. So I, I don't know exactly. And um, go down down down. Yeah, let's, and the standard is not the, like I mentioned, it's not really clear. Um, there are some mistakes in the standard and uh, cases are missing, so. Uh, so, so. So maybe the question that I should ask is the reverse, which is what's the use case? I mean, yes, the redundancy, uh, or sorry, the reaction mm -hmm. time is the use case, but did did you guys try with STP to get the reaction time by tuning the timers, by tuning the the reaction loop or, or seeing if that could fix it? What, what drove to MRP being for you guys, the feature that you needed or the standard that you needed? Uh, from what I understand, the, the actually the clients are are they want to use this. Okay, that's a fair answer. So this is deployed, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So next question, uh, which you answered already, but. Uh, what is the redundancy use case for connected rings? How does it differ from one big ring? So from my basic understanding that each node in, if you have a, a let's say a ring with uh, 100 nodes, then each uh, node will introduce a, a small delay when uh, it's forwarding the frame. So it will be harder to reach these uh, low profiles and then it's easier to have uh, smaller rings and just connect them with uh, interconnect rings because the ring tests from one ring, they are not going to the other uh, ring. So those uh, ring tests are not passing through the interconnect ring. That's how I see it. Makes sense. Tesla, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. I, although I wonder about the use cases when somebody has a, a hundred redund redundant machines. Your client is very rich, I imagine. Sorry, I, I didn't uh, hear. I mean, your clients must be wealthy if they has, have so many redundant machines. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Well, I, I'm suspecting that this use case is like some industrial controller or something else, right? It's it's probably some very different from a server system kind of design is my expectation, but could be wrong. Um, okay, do we have anything else? I'm surprised, Jamal, no questions from you. He did say the word bridge, admittedly. Uh, I was just laughing at the, that was a, at the comment. Uh, That's my question. To this. I see. Uh, well, okay, in that case, uh, unless I missed somebody, thank you, Hurtsu. We should uh, 